Hello everybody, today we're going to be working on the Tundra. Uh, whenever I step on the brakes, I feel a little bit of a shake. I know that it's the rotors, uh, there are other causes for something like that, but I'm going to be changing those out. So I'm going to be using an impact with a 22. If you don't have that, obviously you're going to need something to get those tires off. You are going to need a 17, a 12, and I happen to have this bolt that I kept because it actually helps push out the rotor if you don't have one of those bolts a little bit of lubricant and hammer be patient they'll come out let's get that tire off all right tires off as you can see it has some years on it the tire actually got stuck to certain areas so first thing i want to do is on the brake fluid cap the reservoir that's up top i'm going to open it up or at least loosen it up um, we could do one or two things take this complete caliper off and there are the two bolts in the back these here so we're going to loosen those first there's this bolt here which is your 12 we're going to completely take that out because when this caliper hangs you don't want it to hang on something so i'm going to put it on a box and i'll show you that in a second if you have the decompression tool then you'll take the brakes out you'll decompress those pistons which means it's going to open all the way up as much as it can and then we'll put the screw in here and here and I'll spray that down in a second with some lubricant to be able to push that outwards. If you don't have a decompression tool, slide a flathead screwdriver right in here and give it a pull. I am replacing those brakes with these new ones. So I'm not worried about tearing up the brakes. If you're trying to save those then be very careful when you start to decompress the back end because you don't want to mess up your brake pads. Um, as you pull, you're gonna slide it from the bottom up and pull in that direction, and I'll show you that in a second, uh, just in case you don't have that specific tool. And then we'll go ahead and, like I said, lube this up, give it a quick spin, uh, let it sit for a minute or two. Ooh, that's tight. And then ugh, go ahead and uh, get that out and put the new one in. All right, so there's that flathead screwdriver, and like I said, I'm just gonna give it a little pull. You might not feel it at first, then you'll feel like it's moving slightly. It probably is. I'm going to scoot it down a little bit more, give it a little bit more pull. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create that gap. I'm trying to get this. As you can see, it's starting to give a little bit to pull away from here. And I'll do the same thing on the back end. All right, so I'm starting to lube everything up. I'm actually even gonna lube around here because that is also one of the parts that gets rusty. Putting a little bit in every hole, filling it up, and then I'm gonna go and give it a spin. By the way, you'll notice that once I loosen these, it's a lot easier to spin this thing. So, with that being said, this bolt here, I took it out, I moved this piece back this has a little knob on here you're gonna see this little uh, line that's a sensor line so you have to be very careful with that one and with this metal one here these bolts are the ones that are gonna come off this hold this entire caliper I'm gonna loosen it gently put it here I like to take the bottom one out first if you didn't hit that with the impact once you have it in a good position, giving it a couple of love taps on the bottom upwards is going to loosen this up. Keep in mind, I'm on the passenger side. Once that bottom one is out, take the top one out while you hold it and then put it here. Obviously, I can't show you because I'm only recording with one hand, but I'll try my best. All right, success. So we do have that off. Now, this thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put the screw in here. Um, dr drill it in, right? Push the screw in to push the drum or the rotor out. Then I'll do the same thing from the bottom until the whole thing loosens up. There's the screw. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in there. And boom, it's out. Again, if you don't have the screw, you're gonna start hitting it with the hammer from the side, turn it, hit it some more, turn it and be patient it'll take a while for this thing to come out um, debating whether I want to take this thing off with one hand there you go boom all right 
let's get the new one all right the new one is on you can obviously tell it's new <laughs> and i did put uh one of the bolts that i used to hold the tire to hold it in place while i do a few things um i am going to be changing these brakes out with the new ones so right now i'm just trying to think would it be easier for me to do it off or on usually i do it on but since I didn't get a chance to decompress, it looks like all the way on one side. I'm going to do it while they're off and see if I could slide it on. If not, what I would usually do is I just go ahead and take them off. Put one side on. And if you don't have the tool manually decompress it, then slide the other one in. That gives you a little bit of wiggle room. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do it while it's off. So I'm going to take this pin off of here. These slide out. I'm going to put the new take the old brakes out put the new brakes in and then i'll show you how the top um, hinges go because there are these little pieces that hold everything in place and actually help expand so you don't hear noise and i'll show you that right now all right so these pins were in i took that support brace out this is going to go right in here I'm slide it right back in i'm going to start prepping the bottom one as well slide that one right back in then I'll get the other brake pad slide that up top slide those all the way up and I'll show you how they lock in place on top all right so I do apologize in that last part I did forget to mention there's this one that goes here and as you're pushing through it goes through that loop it gets hooked into the brake then as you're pushing it loops in here and right there it also gets uh, hooked onto the brake see that brake pad there you go that's what that looks like so now you're gonna see these little holes this one and you want to make sure this one is able to get looped in here let's see if I can record this with one hand and put it in all right maybe I'll do it from the outside first so we're going to start with this side. That's in. I'll loop it in here. I'm going to pull it so I can snap it in where that little hole is. I promise you it's a lot easier with two hands. All right, there you go. Now we will reverse the process, pick this up, slide it in place. I'll use the, uh, the top bolt. To hold it, I'll put in the bottom one, tighten up the bottom one, tighten up the top one, give it a spin, test it out, make sure everything is nice and smooth, and then uh, we'll put the tire back on. This also, I want to make sure that it's nice and loose, because once I put this on, I'll have the wiggle room I need to put that back. That's that brake line with the sensor. All right, so like I said, that brake line's put back. I had to clip um, that sensor back on there. Get all the bolts back in. New brakes. Some hardware there. And the rotor itself. Now, you'll notice it's still a little loose, right? Once you put your rim back on here, tighten it down to about 120 um, foot per square inch. If you don't have uh, a way to torque it down to the specs. My suggestion is you tighten it the way you usually would, uh, like if you had a flat or whatnot. Give it a day as you're driving around. The very next day, check them again. And remember, you should be going cross, 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 cross. That way you make sure that this is bolted correctly for safety purposes. If you're driving and you feel as you're driving there's a weird wiggle, it might be loose, come back, tighten them up, pull over, be safe about this. All right, we're gonna throw the tire on there, go for a spin.